Hello everybody, I am back with Brian from Anarchy Models hey to have another look at one of his new stencils that he's currently got running on Kickstarter. Brian, which one have you got for us today? Next we are going to do uh, our tri-grid. Um, so we've done um, hexagons and uh, diamonds and uh, things like that before, mm -hmm. and scales. Um, but we've had a few people asking for a different one. Uh, uh -huh. So we have triangles as well now. Um, when see. you look at the pattern, it's kind of hypnotic because mm -hmm. you've got you, you can kind of see stars and then squares and then diamonds and all. Yeah. The more so you look at it different ways, you see all different sort of shapes going on. So it's quite yeah. it's quite interesting to look at. Yeah, see this, I would love an alternating one for to do sort of like a, a Venetian tiled floor kind of thing. So if you had one where one set of the triangles was covered and another where the opposite were covered, and then you laid one over the top, one after the other, could make a cool effect. I'm not sure what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so basically, do blue tiles and white tiles. Oh, I see. Uh, so yeah. block out opposing angles on two separate sheets. Could be interesting. Uh, Lining well, up could, might be a you problem. You could probably just do it on one sheet. You, you would just really? do it and then move it and... Ah. Do it again. Yeah. Um, you just have to leave every other one blank. I may have a play uh, with these after he's gone. <laughs> yeah, I could, I could do it. It'd be easy enough to do, especially if I've already done this one. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is the uh, the small plus mini size. Mm -hmm. and you can see got the measurements on the mat there. Yeah. Um, and so then it's we about do... centimetre square on the bigger one and a little under the centimetre on the smaller one. Yeah, yeah. And then we do an even smaller one, which is the micro one. Oh, wow. Which is that one. Um, Very tiny. And again, if you go much smaller than that, you, you start to lose the pattern that the gaps between them are, are so much bigger than the shapes that it doesn't mm. look right. So, Yeah, and um, I'm guessing if you go too small with the lines between, it's just too flimsy. Oh, yeah, you, you need to keep the lines a decent size or it just it will just damage itself. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's I can maybe go slightly smaller, but I think that's the, the best... Uh, yeah smallest we're going to get to yeah well it, it looks good it looks interesting it, it does, like i said you, you you look at it from different ways and there's always different shapes going on it's quite mm -hmm. cool yeah well i mean like for for some of the uses of this one what would you normally recommend what sort of vehicles would you jump for uh well sci-fi vehicles obviously you're not going to put it on your shermans um <laughs> uh, well you might suddenly uh, someone went out there and did that to a sherman and john is in a corner crying <laughs> going, no leave sherman alone um yeah, so sci-fi stuff, mm -hmm. um, you know, we're going to be doing it on a Eldar vehicle in a minute. Mm -hmm. And you've done a test one Yeah, this, this was a test one uh, just on a, a, a die-cast toy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just a little wheelie toy from, I got from a car boot sale. Yeah, but th this um, is what you were talking about, is finding yeah, toys like that video to play with. It, yeah, is that if you've got something that's got similar shapes and curves going on to your models, mm -hmm. you can use it as a practice and try the colour scheme out. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you, you could start it and it doesn't actually work very well. Mm -hmm. um, whereas on here, I, I'm pretty confident that it's going to work just as good on the main larger project. Mm -hmm. um, so this was actually using the micro one. Uh -huh. um, so this size one on the on the model. Um, but, and we're going to use the larger one and probably the micro one as well on the bigger vehicle. Okay. Well, I mean, like for this one, because it's uh, geometric, I assume you're trying to keep the, the orientation the same the whole time again? Uh, it's not as important with this one. Mm. Um, because there's so many shapes going on, mm -hmm. I don't think it matters too much. This one's actually slightly off. It doesn't look like it, but there's so many shapes going on, you don't really notice. Yeah. Um, so with this one, I didn't really worry about it but if you want to try and keep them the same orientation mm -hmm. uh, then you can but um, cool. I didn't on this one all right well let's dive into the other right. vehicle yeah then. so we've got uh, one of these Eldar flyers here mm -hmm. um, and I'm gonna do it in two different ways on the same model I'm gonna have the fade from the the back on one side and on from the front on the other side okay now whenever you say the fade, you're talking about where the the highest point of white is coming from fading out. yeah yeah so the color the color shifts from one to the other you don't have to do the color shift i just think it looks interesting mm -hmm. um rather than just blocking it in one color yeah all right well so uh, let's uh let's give it a go yeah sure so, so... This, the stencil comes as uh one sheet like this mm -hmm. um but for ease of use you can just cut it down the middle so i've got the two here yeah um and i'm going to use that one to start all with. right and then for this we are going for white over the top first and then our color shift over the top yes um 
you, you always want to get your stenciling done in one shot mm -hmm. and really quick. So use a really strong colour and then tint change it afterwards. Yeah. Um, so that's why we use the white. Um, if you're going to do yellow, you could use like a bone colour that's also quite strong. Mm. So, so off you go, sir. Uh, I'm going to do this side fading from the front. Uh, so I'll just pick out the leading edge. Mm -hmm. And again, you're trying to get as tight as possible and just pick out where it's actually touching the model. Mm -hmm. So you're going to want to build the paint up slowly. If you really blitz it on, it gets under the stencil, runs around the panel lines, mm -hmm. and looks rubbish. Yeah, it's it's one of the things I'm noticing is uh, the magic always seems to happen as soon as that stencil comes off for the yeah. first time. Yeah. Could do with another pair of hands, really. Yeah, that's looking cool. Yeah. And then we're going to let the model dictate where we try and put the stencil. You're not going to get the stencil go over these raised lumps because it's just not going to work very well. So you just yeah, don't try ridges. and put it there. Same on this other thing here. Mm. So we can put it in the recesses on the flat areas and just don't try and stuff it into areas where it's just too tight an angle. Mm. So you can quite easily bend the stencil with your thumb like that. Mm -hmm. If it's quite happily into that curve and we will airbrush the fade in mm -hmm. so got that on there mm -hmm. this is look, already looking quite sort of psychedelic yeah i get it in shot there we go um and i think i'm going to use the little one the micro one on this little piece here mm -hmm. mix and match them a bit yeah yeah Yeah. Oh, now where did it go down? It went down here. Ah, just, just on that front kind Yeah, it's just a bit different. Yeah. Um, in hindsight, I probably would have done some on the front as well, but it's too late for that now. Well, you got to do it on the other side. So I'm going to do the other side the other way around, cause just to see how it looks. Yeah. How it looks. And because your coats of paint are so thin, you can actually do this, figure out which way you like better, colour out the one you don't like, and redo it the way you, you do like. You could very easily just repaint it, yeah. Um, so that is one of the plus sides of doing it mm. with the airbrush. So here I'm going to do it from the back just to see what happens because I'm nearly always fading from the front. Mm. So this way round would be a little bit different. Yeah. That's quite cool. Yeah. It is interesting just to see how much the effect changes depending on where you're doing your fade from. Yeah, well that's uh, that's why we're doing this little experiment because I don't think I've actually done it the way around before. Mm -hmm. I think I always do it the other way. Uh, hopefully I'm not having you contort <laughs> too much. <laughs> so again, just really lightly layering on, building the colour up. Triggers going on and off the whole time. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, use the micro one again. Uh -huh. Again, you can get these and fold quite nicely into that curve just by using your thumb. Uh -huh. And then you're just following the point where it's tight. I'm just following the point where it's tight and uh, you get the overspray so through the edges the overspray blends it out nicely it's mm. more interesting um, so ooh, interesting the question is which way do we like better from the know. back to the front or the front to the back? i'm not sure maybe we need the people in the comments to tell us yeah yeah so or even we've like got, that we've with got or even that. even a mixture does look yeah. quite interesting actually come yeah. to look at it so that's from the back to the front oh there you go you can see the whole thing there. yeah interesting I mean, if you were doing this up as like a Harlequin jet, yeah, you could definitely do it a little bit more randomized. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we we do the diamond stencils as well, mm -hmm. um, so you could do this. Little oh little yeah, you could add some of those pretty, in there. Yeah, uh, pretty cool, wouldn't it? Um, well, that, yeah. that's one thing. I mean, like what we're seeing here is a a mono pattern, but what we haven't seen is switching patterns between, which could be an interesting one to do another time with you. That would probably be interesting to do. Yeah, another time, I'll say. <laughs> right.
So we have the stenciling part done. Now, while we've got the white in there, we can actually do some very quick highlights. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't think you can control it enough, then make it a gray. Uh -huh. um, but I think we can do it just with the white. Uh -huh. um, and we're just doing a really subtle edge highlight, which we're then gonna tone back down later. And it's just because we've already got the white in there. But so long as you lay it down thin enough, yeah. it's absolutely fine. So although this looks like I'm spraying gray on there, I'm not. This is just the white. I'm just doing it really thinly. Mm -hmm. I'm just picking out the, the main outline. Mm -hmm. and because you're running a dual action brush, you can have that air flowing until you're in a position you think you're aiming in the right position. Correct, yeah. Now, when you're doing really fine stuff, you may get the paint dry on the tip a bit more often, so you have to watch out for that. Okay. That's really good, and it just breaks up that flatness. Yeah, and when we start bringing in the other colours, this will pop a lot more noticeably mm -hmm. against the black. good that's it's actually, it's actually look interesting with the with the two I, patterns going on yeah i i yeah. really quite like that yeah <laughs> so right yeah i'm interesting to see just how much it pops once you get your your color down there because the white's very stark but if if you've seen any of the other tutorials we've done where brian has been using inks as soon as that color ink goes down there it's so stark against the black with a white undertone it just pops so much wow that is super <laughs> candy <laughs> Right, so now we are going to be using, uh, as we mentioned earlier, this stuff, mm -hmm. uh, which is actually Windsor & Noon ink. This is an actual drawing or paint or writing ink, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, now, you do have to be careful using this in that it will bleed through the paint. So mm -hmm. that won't really matter what we're doing because we're, we're going to be changing the white to pink anyway. Mm -hmm. But if you say you wanted to put white on top of this afterwards, mm -hmm. it would bleed through. I see. Um, and we're going to do a little demo of that sort of while we're doing this. I see. So uh, I am going to do half of this mm -hmm. little square with the pink and half of it without. Okay. And we'll let it dry. Mm -hmm. And then if I do some white on top of this, we'll see that on the gray side, the white stays gray, mm -hmm. white even. But on this side, uh, it will bleed through. I see. Even if this is dry, Aye. It wants to bleed through. And Aye. so the way around this is to varnish it. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to put any paints on top mm -hmm. that you don't want the pink to show a bit through, yeah. you varnish it. If you don't really mind, then it doesn't matter. Gotcha. For this, for this, what we're going to paint, it doesn't actually matter. But mm -hmm. I want to make sure everyone at home realizes that um, although this stuff is definitely usable for painting models, you do have to be aware that it can bleed through. Yeah, so it's um, basically learning how to use the tool. Yeah. So... Make sure this is dry. Well, while that's drying, yeah, we can carry on with the pink on the on the, the aircraft. On yeah. the aircraft. Cool. Um, so where do you want to start? Although looking at it, actually, there's a couple of bits I want to tidy up with the black first. Uh, again, this is something that's good to do as well. Yeah. So if you have your base coat um, ready, you can tidy it up here. I don't like this bit here where it suddenly ends. That was where my thumb was. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so I'm going to blend that back in. It's a little too sharp there. Eh? Yeah, I'm going to blend that back in to the body mm -hmm. and anywhere else that needs a little bit of a tidy up, we can just use the black to knock it back. Yeah. And as long as you do the white nice and strong, uh, it shouldn't be affected too much by the the, um, the black going on top. If you do the white too weak, you'll, you'll, you'll knock the white back because of I, the I layering. The overspray, it won't refade, it'll just cover. Yeah. So we're just going to cut, touch a couple of bits up. Mm -hmm. Mm 
And we are going to be knocking it, knocking the white back even further with the colours, obviously. But this is just to make sure you're you're starting from a yeah, position you're, you're happy with. Yeah, you're softening those edges. I do find it interesting to see just how tiny a movement that index finger is making. Oh yeah, well, I don't think people at home can sort of get that, but I'm just literally just moving a tiny, tiny amount just to pulse the trigger on. If you really open it up, it's just going to puddle and run and yeah. go everywhere. Yeah, so basically, be gentle. Yeah. Okay, so that's our pink. So this is our, it's actually Scarlet, nine, number 967 Scarlet is that okay. one. Um, which in the bottle looks really red mm -hmm. but because of the transparency it comes out pink if I was to spray it onto uh, something else that's got a different colour on it it's like on here I spray it on the yellow it comes out like an orange mm -hmm. um, so it's all about what uh, was underneath it mm -hmm. um, so really nice bright pink on there now we're going to change this again a bit after this so we're not sticking with just with the pure pink this is just to get the first bit down and we're also going to do the where, where the highlights went so you see even though we use white as a highlight mm -hmm. it now looks correct with the rest because we're tinting it back with the pink yeah and that gives a, a really nice and i didn't sort of take shimmer. the highlights as bright as the uh the, the stenciling mm -hmm. so you can see that it's, it's just a bit more subtle so we keep the stenciling the interesting part it, it does tie it all together really nicely. Yeah. That rug really tied the room together, did it not? Like I said, you could you could do the highlights afterwards, but if you do it this way around, it just ties it in more, yeah. and you're using less colours, less changing of the paint, and mixing more paint. Mm -hmm. So with this this colour, we are pretty much just covering most of the model. Um, it's going to tint the whole thing pink slightly um, and then we're going to come in in a minute with a transparent purple and knock it back a bit in certain areas and then because this layer is so thin even if you miss a little bit I'm guessing you could revisit it when it's dried you could yeah um, I mean, you could, you could also, if necessary, re-stencil parts of it and come back in again or yeah. re-black parts of it because you've done it wrong and, and mm -hmm. do it again. Um, yeah. but I, if you're going to do that, I, any, so I would give it a varnish mm -hmm. where you're happy uh -huh. and then um, come and back come in back with... Yeah, gotcha. you, otherwise you could possibly scratch the paint with the stencil. Mm. So make sure you get the edges as well. It's very easy to leave the edge on these very thin mm -hmm. models. So that is very cool. That stage done, and that really just jumps out with that big yeah. electric pink on there. And again, the reason we're using the the, the Windsor Newton ink is Vallejo don't do a really nice bright pink ink. I love the Vallejo inks, mm -hmm. but they don't do one. Mr. Vallejo, if you're listening, <laughs> I would really like a nice bright pink game ink, mm -hmm. and also a really nice cyan blue ink. Really nice bright colours. They'd be really good. Thank you very much. <laughs> Right. <laughs> hey, if you're going to get the shed out there, you may as well. well do it. You may as well, because I love their products. It's just they're just missing a couple of colours out of the inks, which I really love, mm -hmm. um, which we're going to use now. So we now have the Game Ink Violet, which is uh, like a purpley colour, mm -hmm. and we're going to use that to knock some of this pink back, um, as we've said in some of the other um, videos. It's mm -hmm. really good idea to uh, use more than one colour at a time. Mm -hmm. I'm just quickly going to change colour in this one because I forgot. <laughs> it's easy to do whenever you're running multiple brushes. Yeah. You know, I would definitely recommend that after you've done a step and you're thinking of changing colours, have a look through each of them just to see what you have. Yeah, I've done it before. I've, I've messed up, a, or dirtied up a new airbrush even though I've already got that paint in one. Mm -hmm. So we can see it here on the paper, we've got a nice contrast between the pink and the purple, but they are, they're similar sort of tonally. Yeah. So if we layer the purple over there, you can see it sort of blends in nicely. Mm -hmm. So here I'm going to be mainly aiming along the back edge of where the uh, the pink is. Mm -hmm. and so this you're is just... just to tint it a bit darker, make it look a bit more interesting. Mm -hmm. So you're knocking back the fade point. 
Yeah, so the fade, the fade starts further back, and it's now purple rather than the pink. So we can see on this wing here mm -hmm. versus the rest. Well, this pit's in shot quite nicely. So if I do on there, you can see it's just making it look not quite so stark. Mm -hmm. I think this looks a bit like the uh, the Jemadar ships off Star Trek. They have the uh, yeah, I'm getting the, that the, the pinky sort of purple lights on their ships, don't they? It is something that Star Trek always did, was each of the ships had a very key colour, a very primary colour somewhere yeah. on them. Yeah. So... Yeah, that's working there great. There you go. Cool. Okay, so that's the uh, that's that done. Now, you, you could take the highlights much brighter if you wanted to. I quite like it nice and dark. Mm. You could then pick out some bits with brushes. Um, but if you wanted to make it light, all you would do is take the white highlights we did on the edges. You'll bring them much lighter mm -hmm. um, and then uh, then knock them back to where you wanted them to, mm -hmm. uh, like we have with the, the inks there. Um, so let's go back to our little demonstration of the yeah. inks. So this is now so going to be this is white. now this is now got the the grey and the mm -hmm. the pink ink on there. If you then decided you wanted to go over the top of this for some reason with whatever colour, um, we're just going to layer this on, and you can see that that pink is really bleeding through the white. Mm -hmm. It's even bleeding through into the other side of that. Yeah, you can see the line is changing shape. Yeah, I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but you can actually see it moving into the white yeah. that was on the mask side of the grey. Um, and that's just, even here, if I layer that white on, it's take, making that grey, grey, uh, whiter and whiter, but it's not changing that pink much at all. It's just staying a really pinky sort of colour. Mm -hmm. It's really bleeding into there. So you you basically never get, no matter how much white you put on it, you'll never get that to go pure white again. Yeah, unless you've given it a varnish. You give it a varnish. So you would you would finish doing with the ink, you would varnish it, then come back on top with whatever colour you want to do. Mm -hmm. If your pink's the last bit or part of a transparent painting like we've done with the, the purple there, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter because it's going to help the blend. Yeah. But on anything else where you want the colour to stay pristine, yeah. varnish it on top of the, mm -hmm. the Winter & Newton like that otherwise you get that bleed which is still fading really into that side yeah. now <laughs> that's really interesting to see just how it is actually bleeding straight through the color itself yeah all right well everybody if you like that particular stencil make sure and go and check out the kickstarter if there's any designs that you would maybe hope for brian to make drop it in the comments below who knows you might get it into the kickstarter itself maybe uh we will move on thank you for watching we will see you again another time cheers guys bye go ahead and check out our other content on screen now and while you're at it why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.